Hello, Tex Andrews from the Light Zone Project, and this is our next to last video on the Zone Mapper tool and Zone Finder. Let's recap what we did with the Zone Mappers in the previous several videos. You'll remember that I made very few raw adjustments to this image. The first thing that I brought out was this Zone Mapper tool. Please note, by the way, I've turned every tool off so that we can go through them in progression. But I decided I needed to spot the image, so I brought out a spot tool. Here's everywhere I decided to spot the image. This one up here is now outside the image. That's because at the end of the editing process, I decided to crop my image, give myself more of a widescreen kind of effect here. So there's the spot tool. I'm going to click it on. That gets rid of all the spots. The next tool I opened up was this zone mapper tool. I created zone locks in these spots. I dragged this down to get my blacks richer. I put in zone locks at one stop increments. Each of these gray bars is a half a stop. I lifted my lights up here a little bit. Let's turn this one on. Dramatic effect. I also used one of the blend modes, hard light in this instance, and I dragged the tool opacity slider down just a little bit to ease that off. Let's turn on the next zone mapper. In this one, I created a region. There's the region there. I created this region there, but I inverted the mask just to work on the sky some more. Once again, created my zone locks, moved them around, and got this effect. There's the change from the first zone mapper, and there's the second one. So now multiple zone mappers used to continue to work on this area. I brought out another zone mapper. And these are the areas I ultimately decided upon. In the original video, I didn't have this set up exactly like this, but as I came back to finish my image, I went and changed these a little bit. And you can do that. You can go change a tool. So let me click on this. In this particular case, I copied the region from this zone mapper tool to this zone mapper tool, but I did not invert the mask this time. I used a very narrow feathering area so that I could begin working on the foreground area here. And that's the result I got after I did that. So that's three successive zone mapper tools with blend modes and regions used to control different parts of the image. I said that after I had done that, this area here began to pop out and began to look like a focal point in my image, so that as I was going, the zone mappers were guiding me to new places where new editing options were beginning to present themselves. So here's my hue saturation tool. I used the eyedropper tool to select something out of these clouds, sort of in this lavenderish range. I'll turn that on and you see that the pinks in the clouds started to come up. I also adjusted the range here and it also helped the blues. It also brought a little bit of chromaticness to these grays over here. We'll close that one down. As I then decided to crop I used a clone tool, just brought that in really quickly, and I cloned this little spot out right at the bottom. Boom. And last but not least, I've got a sharpening tool. And I used the sharpening tool with a region that I copied from Zone Mapper 7 so that I could do that work right down here in the foreground area. And when I activate it, there are some subtle changes. You may not be able to see them well, but there are subtle changes that occurred down here. And it helped 
do some separation now in this atmospheric mist that was coming up off this lake. This is Mono Lake out in California. There, we're starting to see some differentiation here. Starting to see this a little bit separated. The sharpening is helping to pop this out in the foreground. All of this starts to become much more prominent. Gives a separation. And now we have a relatively decent looking image when at first, we had that. So I think you can see using the zone mappers intelligently can help you really, really change your image positively. In the next video, I'll talk finally about the difference between luminosity mode and RGB mode.